Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. Let me tell you about today's episode. Today is the Forgery on the Fourth project over at the Counterfeit Kit Club. We are inspired by existing products in the crafty world, including these items from our Coco Daisy inspiration for, for this month. I will be taking washi tape in lots of shapes, sizes, and colors and creating a table full of embellishments. So let's get started. All right, here are the set of supplies I'm going to be using. Actually, I will change out that stamp set a little bit later, but we'll talk about that when we get there. I do have the collection of washi tape that I have put in my counterfeit kit this month. And if you don't know about my kit builds, I will link you up to that. And I pulled out some extra washi tape. This is a set of very narrow washi tape that I bought off of Amazon quite a while back. And I love this size and I haven't used it nearly enough despite how much I actually love it. So we're gonna put it to use today by mixing and matching sizes and patterns and colors of washi tape to create embellishments. And here I am at first just choosing up all of the different patterns I want to use. And I'm choosing colors and patterns that will um, go along with the motifs that I already have going on, as well as I'm using gold accents to help that thin, thin washi tape stand out a little bit more against the other washi. Uh, you just saw me add in a, an arrow die set to this set of supplies. Now, all of this stuff I had in my main counterfeit kit, except for that arrow die set. I just added that in for this project today. We are gonna start off with this frame maker. Now there's lots and lots of ways to make frames. I like this little tool. <laughs> I'm kind of a fan of these little punch boards um, because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of things. It takes a lot of the math out of things. If you follow the simple instructions, which I sat down and I thought, oh, I've used this thing before, I'll just get it. And then it took me a little bit to figure out how to get back into the flow of this thing. So you have to set these little pegs to the thickness that you want your borders to be. And um, there's some punching involved to get an inner um, frame started to cut out. And I realized, okay, I've got to set it over here to punch it. And that made total sense after I did it. <laughs> so you um, set the frames and you can set those frames to different sizes. I will do that a little bit later, but this isn't a tutorial on how to use this little frame punch. It's an idea on once you have a bunch of frames and you could cut these out on an electronic die cut machine or, or cut them out on a paper trimmer that allows you to kind of gut out pieces. Um, and then we're gonna decorate them up in a couple of different ways using the washi tape. So sometimes this punch tool isn't perfect, so I use my scissors to just clip off any little stray kind of hair bits of the paper that is left over. And I'm gonna create, oh, first I'm punching out the outer corners of this, which it also lets you do to get rounded frames, so you can leave them square or you can have them rounded. The inner punch is always gonna be rounded on these things, so I, made uh, several of these three inch frames and I like these to be sizes for framing embellishment clusters. So that's why I did those size. You can make yours be sizes for framing photos if you want, um, but this is what I did this time around. And that frame tool is in my stash in case I want to do something along those lines later. So with the washi tape, we are going to add color to these frames. Now, a lot of the frames um, in the inspiration piece were printed frames. And we are, you could ink up these frames, you could stencil these frames, you could stamp these frames, but we all have a lot of washi tape in our collection that we often don't pull out enough. So today I'm just using washi tape. And here is where the nice thing about having different sizes of washi tape, you can use thick lines and you can use thin lines to add a little bit of difference to your, um, to your designs. I overlap the edges so that I can get clean cuts off of that washi tape. Of course, you can do it whatever way works for you. I do make a little pile of sticky washi bits on the edge to um, kind of help keep everything collected. And I burnish it down pretty well with my finger because washi tape is notorious for peeling back up. And if you're worried about that, certainly add a little bit of extra li liquid glue before you stick that washi down. I did pull out a grid paper mat um, to do this because that'll help you get, if you're especially going across 
the open space of the frame, it will help you align your lines so that they are straight across the project. So here I'm putting down one line and I'm measuring it to a particular grid line. And then I will continue with the other three. And then I will repeat the same thing on the other side of the frame. And that way I don't have to waste washi tape going straight across the empty open space and then cutting it out and throwing it away. So that grid can be helpful. And here is a zoomed in look at this frame and we will take closer looks at the end with the photos um, as we finish up this project. I'm gonna show you just a couple more ideas before we move on to some other embellishing. Um, I've noticed that some of these frame embellishments are going on the diagonal. And so I'm gonna do that with my washi tape and see here you can see I am cutting out that portion just because it's a little easier to get a straight line uh, on the diagonal if you go all the way across. But I'm gonna use that portion on the edge of this. And then I have room in the middle for a third piece and I can um, make sure that it's equidistant from each side, assuming that I have my lower piece straight, that is. And I decided that now that I had kind of an idea where it should sit, I will put the second piece on and then I can make it straight against that third piece straight against that second piece, giving it a burnish with my finger and then I can trim off the edges. Oh, I did, when I tore my washi tape, it did tear, um, too much over the frame so I just peeled it off and because I had enough of a tail on the other end I just rotated it and I can replace it and uh, fix my mistake. So washi tape is a little forgivable that way um, and you can always just use another piece of washi tape if that's not going to work either. So I've got let's see two different sizes of frames here. Like I said, most of my frames were three inches by three inches. I did have a, I think a two and a half by two and a half. And this one, I don't remember, but it's tall and skinny and it has a wider border at the bottom. So I'm gonna play with that design element with wider washi tape and narrower washi tape. And that is another fun reason to have these two sizes. Uh, when I put that washi tape down, I will just use my scissors to clip it as close to that bottom washi as I can to make it flush with the edge. Um, and of course it doesn't need to be perfect because what is, <laughs> what is perfect these days? All right, and then a little trimming and those are done. And now we are gonna move on to tags. So when I first started these tags, I thought it would be easier to put my washi tape down on my white cardstock. Um, all of this is just, you know, regular white cardstock and it's not even a heavy weight. It's like 65 pound regular cardstock. I thought at first it would be easier to put my washi tape down and then I could line up my tags afterwards or rather put my washi tape down, line up my tags and then run it through the die cut machine as opposed to putting the washi tape on afterwards. And yeah, I decided I liked it better doing the washi tape afterwards and you will see me get to that in a moment. Here I'm trying to get as much um, space out of this white cardstock as I can by sizing up my um, tags here and trying to fit the washi tape on there. And I'm adding different rows of this washi tape. And now here's where you can't necessarily see the detail of that skinny washi tape very well yet, but we will get to more close-ups later. All right, I ran all of those through my die cut machine and when they came out, they were just ever so slightly crooked. And that's when I decided, you know what, I could probably just do a better job with my grid paper. Um, and there was a little bit of an indentation from the hole punch portion of this die set because every die set is different. I had shims in my die cut machine. So I pulled those out, uh, die cut a whole bunch of tags, and then one of them got cut off shorter because there wasn't enough paper. Um, but that's okay, then you have some variety. So these tags are nice that you can make them longer or shorter just by trimming them down. And I am going to town again with my washi tape. So this one's gonna have just a small corner diagonal with it. I've got a pretty kind of ombre, um, watercolory looking washi tape there. And then this one is a floral that I think was part of the Carpe Diem line um, several years ago. And I am mixing that up with the thin washi tape in the gaps that, not gaps, but where the, the two tapes meet, the junction of the two tapes, I guess. And I'm trying to figure out what else would be good with this effect. And one of those, uh, the hearts 
um, on that washi tape, one of them fit just perfectly in that corner and I thought that was a sweet little touch. Now, all those previous tags, I've done washi tape horizontally, both at the tops and the bottoms. I've got some diagonally and here we're going vertically both with wide washi and thin washi. And I think with this one, I am mixing up different little hearts, this kind of pink washi tape, if you can see that has gold hearts embossed on it, and then it's matching up with the other multicolored heart in, uh, washi tape. And I thought that was a sweet little combo there. All right, so that was all about our tags. And now we are gonna move on to arrows. And at the end of this section, I had one of the fun, funnest embellishments happen sort of by mistake. Not mistake, but just by noticing something. So. We'll talk about that in a moment. The first thing I'm gonna do is set up lots of rows of washi tape. I am trying to pick and choose a little bit um, what colors and patterns of the washi I'm putting down on my cardstock because these dies are fine. You're not gonna get a lot of that pattern. And if you're expecting, you'll see me do floral washi tape in a minute. And if you're expecting to pick up the the, uh, a larger pattern on a small die, you're gonna have to be really careful about where you cut these. So I was particular about that. I tried to line up my arrows so that small flowers would stay whole in the wide part of the tail of the arrow and that you'd get like a flower center or something along those lines in the head of the arrow so that you could still see that they were flowers. And here is what they look like when they are all done. I did die cut um, white cardstock bases to do a stacked die cut technique with these. So I just dip them in a puddle of glue and I will glue these layers together. So I have three layers all together, plus that layer of washi tape gives it a little extra sturdiness as well. So I'm making uh, these kind of chipboard pieces. And here is what I thought was really fun. When I looked at the leftovers um, from cutting these, I knew I had to save those. They were so pretty. So I'm just trimming right along the edge of that washi tape. And I thought I was gonna trim them flat, but I really like the torn edges. So I just repeated the tears um, up against that washi. And now I have even more embellishments from the same amount of work. So those arrows made me super happy. All right, that stamp set I thought I was going to use, but after doing all of these other embellishments, I was ready for something easier. So we are going to make some circle punched embellishments, and these are just super duper easy. Now I am tearing off little pieces of tape here that I like the color and print to, but you know what I should have done is just put a whole row of the tape down and um, just punch out the parts that I like the best because you know, picking and choosing these areas, it's gonna waste tape anyway, so why not make it easier <laughs> in the process? And, and then I realized I put those pieces of tape too close together because now I don't have room to punch a circle. So with that tape in place, I'm just gonna punch through and that's it. That's the whole bit to this part of the embellishments. And so how I'm gonna mix this up, and you'll see more of that in a minute, is with color pattern, I'm gonna mix up the widths of the washi tape um, so that I get some variety. And then I will also combine various pieces of washi tape together. So this one is super simple, really easy to accomplish, and I'm hoping it will add some fun little dimension when I get to using these on my projects. So as I finish punching out these flowers, I think I'm gonna cut away here. There we go, we are back with all of those different patterns. Now, depending on the pattern on your washi, it may work vertical or horizontal. Um, so you can see like the hearts would look awkward probably if they were vertical, but the other patterns, it usually doesn't matter. So you can use them in whatever direction. And here's where I'm adding up the narrow washi to go along with the wider washi. And I found that there were a couple of combos that I really liked out of these. So let's take a couple of close-up looks. So here you can see the table full of embellishments and here is one that I didn't do on camera but I cut some notches out of the bottom of that frame to make it more of a, a slide frame style. And then here is everything that is organized. So you can see all the pieces I made in this one crafting session. And then this photo is just my favorites out of everything. I really liked the diagonal stripes 
and I really liked the combo of the thick and thin washi tapes together. And of course, I am totally in love with those arrows. So that is it for this time around. I hope you got something useful out of watching me make some embellishments with washi tape. If you enjoy washi tape, I do have a big washi tape video that has been very popular, so I will link you up to that with lots more ideas. And until I am back with you next time, I hope you have an artful day.